Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. I'd like to start just by acknowledging the traditional custodians um, of the lands, not just um, where we are here, but also uh, especially for Deakin, uh, we're located across several campuses. So just acknowledging uh, the elders, past, present, and emerging. Okay. Um, yes, so what I'm going to talk about today uh, is a project that we started last year. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about how um, it arose um, and the significance of it because um, the context, I guess, is going to be an important aspect of that. So I might even just start by saying, um, so at Deakin University, uh, we're not we don't really have a mathematics cohort as such. So I remember when I was doing my PhD and at Melbourne, there would be 40, 100 honours PhD students. Yeah, so we, I would have been one of two honours students in maths at Deakin, one of one or two uh, PhD students. So we definitely don't have a, you know, mathematics, student mathematical community. And, uh, you know, I did various things throughout the years to try, start a Facebook, Facebook group, uh, you know, try to get people interested in mathematics so that we could get something uh, in that space happening. But we just, we don't really have the critical mass. Mass. Um, <laughs> or mass. Or mass, yeah. Um, New work. A lot of our students, so the students that I tend to uh, teach are students with primary education degrees. So that's like about 500 students in first year. Um, and then we've got a lot of students doing engineering um, and our maths is in the IT school, so we also have students from computer science, but we don't have a mathematics degree um, and our, our, even our major sequence really compared to a lot of other universities um, is fairly uh, compact. So, yeah. So that's, the, that's where this is coming from because some people might say, oh, you've done a gazette. We didn't do that every year and it's, it's no big thing, but it's a big thing for us. So um, I'm going to be talking about the Mathematics Yearbook. Um, it's a book. It's got like an ISBN and everything. It's properly published. It even comes up as, I come up as an editor in the, uh, on my research profile, even though it's not a research publication. Um, <clears throat> and so last year we put this together and what it really arose out of was um, some development we'd done in our units. So we, we changed our units and because of that we were getting work that we previously never had before. So I'll talk a little bit about um, the changes that we've had for some of our units. I'll talk about the benefits for us um, and the students. Um, really. The, the benefits for us, uh, Deakin went through what a lot of universities would have gone through. Uh, last, last year we had a big mass redundancy and it was overall a very, very horrible time. But so this was a really nice thing that happened uh, last year. It's all of that. Um, okay, so um, yes, and I'll, I'll show it a little bit. So I'll hand out the, you know, have a free to have a look kind of through it um, here. Just go to it. Hopefully, my internet is working. Um, <clears throat> just to give a quick idea of, of what I'm talking about, so that we know what we've been doing. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, it's a book and it uh, contains articles by students. So, all of these articles were based either on work that the students have submitted. So um, we identified some really nice pieces of work that students had submitted, mostly in first year undergraduate courses um, that we then invited students to turn into a, um, a general audience article. Um, so half of, well, more than half of it is that. So these are some of the titles there. And then the other half of the yearbook also is, um, Students complete students in second and third year have been completing research projects under supervision with a lecturer, so they you know produce a mini research article. So it spans you know spans the the lot. Um, so students 
you know, a lot of a lot of these students are from a subject that I teach, which is mainly about problem solving. So these are just nice, cute problems um, that they would have solved or that they created themselves. Um, but then in uh, Julian's course, which is a discrete mathematics course, um, there's some quite, you know, um, you notice the this is a 40-page article on introduction to cryptography um, done by a first-year student, which was yeah, really pretty impressive. So, um, and you know, we so we invite students to contribute to it. We work with them. We get them to write their articles in LaTeX. Uh, we edit it a little bit. Uh, try to, you know, what they what they've submitted for their coursework would usually need a little bit of tailoring. Uh, so that it's kind of accessible to a general audience. Um, we have big work to do with the copyrights team at the university as well because it's going to be published. So they, you know, so students learn along the way about how to use uh, or not use pictures that they found on the internet. Um, yeah, and put them together, and then you know, it's a nice kind of uh, closing thing that we have at the end of the year. Students can receive a copy of it and then show their parents or things like that, keep out of the work they've done. So <clears throat> how did it come about? Um, over the years, uh, just before the pandemic, but then during the start of the pandemic, um, similar to what Mary had talked about happened at UTS, uh, we had with us as well. So we have an amazing design team, graphic artists and um, uh, learning designers who worked with us to uh, build new subjects. A lot of that focus is on making a really nice uh, online facing, you know, online textbook basically. Um, but we had a lot of control in how we wanted to develop our units. So um, I'm going to talk about mine, um, Julian's and Kerry's unit. So Julian developed um, discrete mathematics course and all of us, you know, had our own visions of what we wanted to do. So um, you know, in some way, this redevelopment was thrust upon us. The university said, we've got issues with mathematics, and so uh, we're going to put all of this money into redeveloping your work. But we did really take the opportunity to create something that we're all pretty proud of for the subjects we did. So Julian's version of discrete mathematics um, is based on um, a design framework uh, which mainly came to us through some movement from Swinburne to, to Deakin. So there were some lecturers in IT at Swinburne who were doing this idea. And basically where rather than teaching a course in a week by week structure, um, Julian had recognized really that at the lower end of achievement in maths, students struggle to, to cover all of the topics and then they don't do it that well, they pass with a 50%, you know, they get the bare minimum. Um, and would we, you know, if they've achieved 50% on the exam, is that really what we want to see them having done? On the other hand, you've got high achieving students who can go through that first year course with very little effort at all. So because of where that course is targeted, because we don't want our fail rates to be too high or too low, um, yeah, a high, an HD student, a student who scores 100 might not necessarily be that exceptional um, they might be but they might also just be good at copying the example questions and applying them to the questions that they're given so <clears throat> the way that this course works is it's got modules it's got a whole lot of core modules so they're the past modules basically students have to go through these they do an automated assessment until they get 90 percent on it so it's that kind of mastery idea and they also submit um, basically evidence that they've learned it. So they submit some study notes, uh, a reflection, basically have to write something that proves that they understand that topic. Uh, key to this idea is they get feedback after they submit it. So um, the, the online tutor will say, I, I don't think you've quite articulated it there. What do you mean? Or can you show me an example of what this means? So the student, you know, there's kind of a dialogue um, that goes on throughout the trimester. Um, until the tutor is satisfied that the students dem demonstrated competency in that subject. Um, 
So, and that gets a student a pass, gets them a 50. If they just pass all of those, don't do anything more than they get the 50. Um, if they want to get a credit, they need to do two of the optional modules um, and then a little bit more for a distinction. So they do another module and then study their own topic. So they have to set their own learning outcomes, study the topic, and then, yeah, basically achieve those learning outcomes. And then the very highest, um, to get an HD, they need to essentially take that thing that was their own topic and then create a piece of writing that basically teaches that. So they're going from demonstrate that you understand this topic that you studied yourself to uh, create a module that would help someone else understand it. So the emphasis becomes on communication and all that kind of stuff. Um, so the key thing that happens here, and um, you know, there can be a lot of interest in, in this kind of, you know, it's, it's a very interesting structure it's not just different in the way that it's uh, not week by week that students essentially kind of go at their own pace. It's also, you know, there's no lectures in it that becomes workshops. So there's lots of other stuff around that. But important for this um, is that that HD task gives an opportunity for students who are really into something to show off and to create something that's really pretty awesome. And so at first year, um, rather than only seeing students solve routine calculations, um, we get an opportunity to see, yeah, really nice bits of work. So, you know, there's, there's students that attempt that HD task and it's not, you know, they need to go back and learn how to not plagiarize and, and have, you know, so there's, it doesn't always result in amazing stuff, but um, some of the things that come through and the dialogue that happens in the process of creating that work um, is something really rare for all that wasn't possible for us at that first year level. So that's Julian's unit, um, the script mathematics. Julian Hugon, by the way, is um, on, the, on the front of the slides. Um, Kerry's unit is a um, essentially like a bridging unit of maths methods. So similar to what Rosie was talking about um, before, although it doesn't go as far as substitution it kind of tries to cover the calculus that's done in methods at our school so it is seen as a um, pathway into an engineering degree um, and what uh, what Kerry's unit is based on it's a little bit of gamification as well um, she put a lot of effort into building these personas um, and she's kind of got a fantasy theme that her unit runs around and visiting different kind of countries and civilizations. So they, they get into a little bit of the history of mathematics um, throughout that unit as well. Um, and again, it's, it's students aiming at success, but kind of getting self-awareness for where they're at. So, you know, do they want to be a knight who um, I think, I think Carrie likes the knight the best because it's someone who, Kind of puts in effort and struggles against the. Uh, I'm not going to say what she said properly, but you know they're kind of they're they're uh, increasing in in competence and up to the the magician who, um, yeah, not not just good at maths, but you know understands things and can help people. So her unit also uses the same online platform with the feedback throughout the trimester that Julian's uses. Um, but it's not, but it's still week by week. And so for this unit, um, it's more that um, at the past level, students will, you know, show that they can understand and implement the, the main mathematical ideas, but then there's higher uh, tasks for some of the weeks um, that they would do if they're aiming for an HD. Um, and again, um, the key, you know, Again, interesting structure. Um, some things are working well, and some things I'm sure will, um, you know, it's in its early days, and things need to be improved a little bit from it from our perspective. Um, but there's also pieces of work throughout this course, which is really, I mean, it's a general mathematics um, methods replacement, but 
part of Kerry's philosophy is that by putting it in this fantasy kind of context, it, it takes students outside of that, you know, because a lot of these students aren't students who are, have had great success in mathematics. So it takes them into a kind of new realm, can understand it. They call their the issues that they have with mathematics dragons, so they have to slay their dragons and all that kind of stuff. So it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But it does have opportunities throughout the unit, again, to do bits of work that aren't just solve this equation. So, um, you know, looking at a whole a historical aspect of mathematics and presenting that kind of way. Um, and then my unit, which uh, doesn't use the same system as those two units, so it's probably a much more uh, traditional idea, but um, it's a unit for uh, primary education students who are specializing in mathematics. So they're, they're not, yeah, they're doing like a bit more maths than most of the people doing primary school education. Um, and, uh, and it's built a lot around problem solving, communication, um, as well as a little bit of programming, um, trying to teach them again. So my, my main aim, I guess, in the first year of, of the primary mathematics is to help students be enthusiastic and um, excited about maths and experience some success. In this unit, I'm trying to teach them that mathematics is not just um, routine problems, like that mathematics is much more than that. It's always what I'm trying to get across with, again, varying success, depending on the feedback that you listen to or don't listen to. Um, <clears throat> so in this unit as well, um, there is, I mean, there's still fundamental things that they have to do and they have to demonstrate that they can solve certain types of problems, but a, a big emphasis is on communication. So the, the pieces of work they submit, I think a nice, you know, four of the students um, was either one of their problem solving tasks or, um, or other that I thought, you know, it's a really nice journey that they've described um, and that they could, yeah turn it into a general purpose article. So um, we hadn't decided, or we, we didn't really have plans to do the yearbook before this. It was really, you know, I'd implemented feedback in my unit because I thought oh, at least peer feedback for students means that more than their marker will see it. Um, but then some of the work that I got in here, I was talking to Julian and said, you know, I really think I could put together some of the best um, submissions in my unit and make it into a little book. It's like, oh, well, I was thinking of doing that. And so I said, okay, let's all do it. And it's good that we all got together and, and did it because that means um, it happened. So that was it really, that we were seeing a lot of nice work um, that we could put together. We had students undertaking summer projects, um, funded and unfunded. Again, we don't have a huge mathematics cohort, but we do have opportunities for students to do little projects with us over the summer. Um, <clears throat> part of yeah, part of my thinking as well was uh, you know students seeing good work can motivate them to do good work. So I wanted to have a platform to be able to share previous year's work with them. Um, and yes, and as I was saying before, um, yeah, we've never really been able to get a mathematical community off the ground, but this was like a nice way to kind of do it. So to have a small group of students that um, didn't necessarily recognize themselves as elite mathematicians, um, you know, none of them, not many of them, I think, are doing like a full mathematics degree, but they've just gotten into some part of the subject and, and um, created something really nice. And so to kind of acknowledge that work, get them to think a little bit more about their mathematics and, and do all of that was um, part of the motivation. <clears throat> so, um, yes, benefits for us. I mean, yeah, I'm happy to be selfish about this, that, you know, for, for me, um, the time spent getting to know um, some of those students, and, you know, this was all online, it was last year and it was mainly in the second half of the year that we we're doing it so we're interacting with the students online just in a in editing kind of way but still being able to have those interactions is really nice um, a lot of my energy um, all of our energy i'm sure it's similar for people here is with students who struggle with mathematics and it's very it's fine it's not 
you know, they're very rewarding and that's really important for us as well. But it's also nice to be able to engage with students who like are actually excited, you know, they're not just thankful to you because you help them, they're actually excited about what you're teaching them um, and working with. So that was a really nice aspect of it. Um, a lot of the, uh, you know, working on these projects gives us an opportunity actually to build those students on other things. So for instance, I've got a project this year where I'm having undergraduate students helping out teaching in my classrooms. And a lot of the students who did these articles were people that I invited to come into those classrooms. So, you know, I can continue working with these students for the next few years in different capacities that we can offer them. Um, and yeah, for us as well, having something like you know, to just to, to show the university that we're doing stuff and um, to share that kind of story is good as well. So it you know, gives us some visibility within the university. Um, the students, yeah, that we that we dealt with, I had a nice, I won't show the video because uh, it's probably, yeah, I haven't got permission to show it to a wider audience than at university, but a very cute video of um, the students and how excited and honoured they were to be asked to contribute to the yearbook um, and to, you know, they liked the idea of it as well and they liked engaging with it. Um, yeah, so it was, you know, it's not just recognising that great achievement that often we only have the capacity to do with high marks, but also, um, yeah, getting some of those students to, to realise that what they were doing was quite um, advanced as well. Um, yeah, they're also, and yeah, there, there are different uh, benefits as well in terms of, yeah, a whole lot of, you know, when you start making something official and you have to go through the process of coming up with a nice template and uh, proofreading and, uh, you know, working with students to not breach copyright things with their diagrams and all that kind of stuff, it's a different set of skills, I guess, that should theoretically be helpful for them in their future careers, whatever that is. So some of that extra stuff, um, you know, having a clear process on how we were going to invite students um, and get them to, yeah, and hopefully, for, you know, to have enough students to contribute to it, um, but also not too many because we needed to work with them to um, improve their work. Um, we worked with, we had a great uh, person from the library who helped us with our um, copyright and understanding all of those kinds of issues that could happen when you're actually publishing something and using student work that they've done as part of assignments. Um, and just general, yeah, production. I've never had to organise a conference or anything like that. So it's, I'm sure that's a lot more work, but <laughs> having some level of, you know, all of sticking to timelines and getting things ready and knowing dates and all of that was, was a fair bit to me as well. Okay, so yeah, I think that's all, all I really had to share. I hope I've given an idea of a quite positive aspect of uh, mathematics teaching last year um, and happy to answer questions about anything. Fantastic.